Good afternoon. During today's legislative hearing, we will consider one bill, S-2088, the Wounded Knee Massacre Memorial and Sacred Site Act. S-2088 was introduced by Senators Rounds and Thune, and it would place 40 acres of land currently owned in fee by the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe into restricted fee status. This property is part of the site of the Wounded Knee Massacre, where hundreds of unarmed Lakota men, women, and children were killed by the United States Army in 1890 on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation in southwestern South Dakota. Congress issued a formal apology for the massacre 100 years later in 1990. This bill would authorize the tribes to continue to use the land as allowed by a 2022 covenant that restricts the use to a memorial and sacred site not subject to commercial development or Indian gaming. Before I turn to Vice Chair Murkowski for her opening statement, I'd like to extend my welcome and thanks to our witnesses for joining us today. I look forward to your testimony and our discussion. Vice Chair Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I too welcome the witnesses to this hearing on S-2088. Um, I know we're going to get additional background from Senator Rounds on the bill that he has, has introduced, but uh, I would like to commend both tribes for their leadership in restoring uh, this land to tribal ownership and signing a covenant to forever protect the land as a sacred site and memorial to the victims and survivors of the Wounded Knee Massacre. As you've indicated, Ms. Ms. Chairman, hundreds of innocent and unarmed Lakota women and children were brutally slaughtered by the 7th Cavalry of the U.S. Army on December 29, 1890. The tragedy marks the last armed conflict in a dark chapter of American history that involved the seizure of Aboriginal homelands, the intentional extermination of bison herds, and the forced relocation and oppression of Native people and their culture. It is time for Congress to step up, place this land in restricted fee status, and effectuate this covenant. I do want to be clear, though, this legislation in no way absolves the federal government of its actions in one of the deadliest Indian massacres in our nation's history. But I, I appreciate uh, the efforts of, of Senator Rounds in advancing this. I look forward to the testimony of today's witnesses. Thank you very much, uh, Vice Chair. Um, I will now turn to our witnesses. I'm pleased to introduce uh, Mr. Wiesipan uh, Garriott, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs at the Department of the Interior. And I'll now defer to Senator Rounds to make his introductions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Vice Chairman. And I want to thank uh, our witnesses as well for taking the time to attend today's hearing and to share their perspective. Um, I, I am honored to be able to introduce President Frank Starr comes out of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Chairman Ryman LeBeau of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. During the legislative hearing today, President Starr comes out and Chairman LeBeau will provide testimony on the Wounded Knee Massacre Memorial and Sacred Site Act, which is S-2088. This legislation would place 40 acres of tribally purchased land at the Wounded Knee Massacre site into restricted fee status to be held by the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. With the Wounded Knee Massacre taking place on the uh, Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and the majority of the deceased tribal members being from the Minneconjo Band, both the Oglala Sioux and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribes hold a deep connection to this event and to the site where it occurred. As you all know, the Wounded Knee Massacre not only represents a low point in U.S. Lakota relations, but it also serves as one of the darkest moments in our nation's history. To date, the Wounded Knee Massacre grounds remain a symbolic site with tribal members regularly visiting the area to honor the deceased. In September of 2022, both tribes purchased the 40 acres from a private owner in an effort to preserve the land. Shortly after the purchase, both tribes signed a covenant holding that the property shall be held and maintained as a memorial and sacred site without any development. This legislation, which places the 40 acres into restricted fee status, will help preserve the site for future tribal generations. This will allow the tribes to own the land outright while also keeping the protections in place, such as a restriction on alienation and taxation from any state or local government. Moving forward, it is my hope that we can come together to acknowledge the history of the Wounded Knee Massacre 
and work to mend our history through reconciliation and mutual respect. I want to thank both the chairman and vice chairman for placing this important bill on the legislative agenda today. I also want to thank both President Starr comes out and Chairman LeBeau for being here today to discuss the Wounded Knee Massacre Memorial and Sacred Site Act. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Senator Rounds. I'd like to remind our witnesses that your full written testimony will be made part of the official hearing record. We'd appreciate it if you could keep your statement to no more than five minutes so that members may have time to ask questions. And, um, and Mr. Chairman and Mr. President, um, we have, a, I think, a five-vote series starting just about now. So we're going to be moving very quickly. I don't want you to interpret that as any indicator of a lack of determination or support for enacting this legislation. I don't think this is going to be terribly controversial, but we're going to be moving fast, and I don't want you to take that the wrong way. So uh, without further ado, uh, Mr. Gary. Good afternoon, uh, Chairman Schatz, Vice Chairman Murkowski, and members of the committee. My name is Wizif Klingariot. I serve as the Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for Indian Affairs at the U.S. Department of the Interior. Thank you for the opportunity to present testimony regarding S-2088, the Wounded Knee Massacre Memorial and Sacred Site Act. I would also note that uh, this bill is of special importance to me, uh, not only as a native South Dakotan and member of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe, uh, but also as a descendant of uh, a survivor of the Wounded Knee Massacre. My great-grandmother, uh, Topa Kinajiwi was her name, uh, was the only survivor from her family. So uh, it's a privilege to be here. Uh, in October of 2022, the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe acquired approximately 40 acres of land in Wounded Knee, South Dakota. Uh, the lands are significant to both tribes as more than 300 Lakota people were lost in uh, the massacre. The tribes acquired the land from private landowners and planned to maintain the site as a memorial and sacred site protected from commercial development. S-2088 directs the Secretary of the Interior within one year to complete and make any corrections and to survey and uh, legal description of the land and to make any other necessary actions for the land to be held in trust, uh, sorry, to be held uh, for the tribes in restricted fee status. Uh, the act defines restricted fee status to mean that the two tribes retain ownership of the land, that the lands are part of the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation and subject to the civil and criminal jurisdiction of the Oglala Sioux Tribe, and that the lands cannot be transferred without the consent of Congress and the tribes, and it is not subject to state or local taxation, and is not subject to any law requiring the review or approval of the Secretary of the Interior for the tribes to use the land as allowed by the covenant the tribes entered into on October 21, 22. The use of the lands is limited by S-2088 to those uh, uses outlined in the October 2022 covenant, which states that the lands will be held and maintained as a memorial and sacred site without commercial development, and that the lands cannot be used for gaming activities under the Indian Gaming Regulatory Act. The department supports S-2088 as it aligns with the administration's commitment to restore tribal homelands. The tribes will have more authority to honor and to protect the Wounded Knee site. Chairman Schatz, Vice Chairman Murkowski, and members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to provide the department's views today. Thank you very much. Uh, Chairman LeBeau, please proceed with your testimony. My name is Ryman LeBeau, and I said in my language, I said, hello, my relatives, I shake your hands with a good heart. And uh, Mr. Chairman, Vice Chairwoman, we thank you for this time, members of the committee. Uh, I, I serve as the chairman of the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. I thank you for this opportunity to testify on behalf of my Lakota people today on the vitally important subject of S-2088, our Wounded Knee Memorial Sacred Site Act. Our South Dakota senators, Mike Rounds and John Thune, who offered this Senate companion bill to restore our lands to Indian country status with reference to our 1868 treaty deserve our gratitude. The Wounded Knee Memorial and Sacred Site Act land will be taken into restricted Indian fee title with the names of our respective tribes on the title. We also thank our Congressman Dusty Johnson who offered the House bill on this important matter concerning Wounded Knee. We urge Congress 
to quickly pass this bill and respectfully ask President Biden to sign into law. The Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, or Lakota people, are comprised of Minikoju, Itazi Cho, Sihasapa, and Ohanupa bands that are that is four of the seven bands of Lakota. Chief Bigfoot, or Spotted Elk, was our Minikoju Itancha chief, and he was a relative of Crazy Horse. His father was Lone Horn, or Minikoju Itancha, who was born in 1790 and lived until 1877. At Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe, or Itancha, including Lone Horn, are signatories to the 1851 Sioux Nation Treaty, Fort Laramie I, and the 1868 Great Sioux Nation Treaty, Fort Laramie II. Chief Bigfoot was a signatory to 1868 treaty, and also my great-great-grandfather, Chief Joseph Forbear, was also a signatory for the Two Kettle Band of Lakota. Chief Bigfoot was sick with pneumonia as Minikoju made their way to Pine Ridge. The cold winter on the prairie in western South Dakota often reaches 20 degrees below zero. And with the wind chill, the temperature can feel like 50 degrees below zero. Major Whiteside told Bigfoot and his people that they could not go to Pine Ridge, but must go to the military camp at Wounded Knee, where the army intended to disarm our Lakota men, women, and children and take all their horses. Chief Bigfoot asked the cavalry to take the Lakota to Pine Ridge, but they refused. In the bitter cold of December 1890, the 7th Cal Calvary per Colonel Forsyth ordered our Minikoju and our Honkpapa Lakota relatives to camp under the Hotchkiss guns at 6 a.m. in the morning on December 29, 1890. The army lined up all the men and large boys nine years old and older in front of the soldiers' firing line, forcibly disarmed them as Black Coyote, the last man, was disarmed. He objected and he had just bought his gun and the soldiers seized him rough, roughly and the gun went off straight up in the air. Then with the sound like canvas tearing, the cavalry commenced firing at the disarmed line of men in front of them and the Hotchkiss guns fired throughout the camp killing, ch killing children, women and old men. Soldiers shot women with babies on their back. The shooting went on for hours when little boys hid in a ravine, the soldiers called them that they were safe now. They could come out. When the boys came out from the ravine, the soldiers shot them. Our Minikoji relative, Dewey Beard, lost his parents, his wife, his babies that day, and was shot several times. He said simply, they murdered us. Dewey Beard was known as Wasu Maja Iron Hail for many wounds sustained at Wounded Knee. Beard was the last living wounded knee survivor, and he said that 350 of our Lakota were massacred that day in, in December 1890. Upon hearing the massacre, General Nelson A. Miles said wounded knee was the most admirable criminal military blunder and a horrible massacre of women and children. Congress and the president ignored General Miles and awarded 24 medals of to the soldiers that killed the the women and the children at Wounded Knee. My grandmother, Marcel Lebeau, served as a nurse in the United States Army in France during the World War II Battle of the Bulge. She treated America's wounded soldiers from the battlefield. When she was 100 years old, she asked Congress to pass the Removing the Stain Act to rescind the medals issued to the soldiers of the Wounded Knee Massacre. She said that there is a pervasive sadness among our Lakota people due to the tragic loss of our Lakota people at Wounded Knee. My relatives, um, we would like to thank the South Dakota Senators and Congressman Dusty Johnson for their leadership on this important matter concerning Wounded Knee. And we thank the Chairman, Senator Brian Schatz, Ranking Member Senator Murkowski, and the Senate Committee members for, for this hearing and the opportunity opportunity to give testimony. We urge Congress to quickly pass this bill and respectfully ask President Biden to sign it into law. We appreciate the time today. Uh, this land is uh, sacred to us. This 40 acres is where our, our relatives were lost and literally is referred to as the killing fields. 
And with the partnership with the Oglala Sioux Tribe and, and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe um, and the United States Congress, we can all partner together to, to make a positive uh, change for our people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President, please proceed with your testimony. <clears throat> Good afternoon, committee. My name is Frank Starr comes out. I am the president of the Oglala Sioux Tribe and a direct descendant of Chief Bigfoot, also known as Spotted Out, who was massacred at Wounded Knee. My fellow Wounded Knee descendant, Mr. Cedric Brokenos, who accompanied me to the House side hearing on this bill made a significant point. He said, the land at Wounded Knee is sacred as 300 or more of our ancestors lay buried there. The land needs to be respected as a memorial site, no different than Arlington National Cemetery. I agree. My tribe is one of the tribes of the great Sioux Nation, which we refer to as the Ochete Shakoi, which means the seven council fires. The Ochete Shakoi consists of the Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota people. And the Oglala are one of the seven bands of the Lakota. We are the people of Crazy Horse, Red Cloud, Little Wound, American Horse, and many others. We signed the Fort Laramie Treaties of 1851 and 1868. The treaties of 1868, the United States promised that our land would be set apart for absolutely for absolute and un undisturbed use and occupation of our Ochete Shakoi as a permanent home. The United States also promised in the treaty that war shall forever cease. The United States broke the treaty by invading our treaty lands and waging war against our people. In 1877, the United States stole the Black Hills and other lands from our people. Then in 1889, the United States divided the Ochete Shakoi into separate tribes at separate reservations. Despite this, the tribes of the Ochete Shakoi continue to unite on matters of national concern. Our recovery of land at Wounded Knees is the latest example of our efforts to protect our rights and sacred lands. In October 2022, the Oglala Sioux Tribe and Cheyenne River Tribe came together to purchase a 40-acre parcel at the site of the Wounded Knee Massacre. We reclaimed this sacred ground not just for ourselves, but for all members of the Ochete Shakoi. We have pledged through the binding covenant that the land will be forever as a memorial and sacred site without commercial development. It is a hallowed ground, and it will always be honored and respected as hallowed ground. The Wounded Knee Massacre is one of the darkest events in the history of the United States. It is a senseless, cruel, and unjustifiable massacre of hundreds of Indian men, women, and children by the United States. Our people have grieved for well over a century the genocidal attack of our people and our way of life that took place at Wounded Knee. In 1990, Congress acknowledged the tragedy and historical significance of the Wounded Knee Massacre and expressed its deep regret to our people. It is an important step in the healing process. S-2088 represents another important step in that process. Under this bill, the Wounded Knee land will be held in restricted fee status. This means the land will be owned by the Oglala Sioux Tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. And at the same time, it will be protected by federal law, inclu including federal restrictions against alienation. And it will be free from state and local taxation. We thank Senator Rounds for introducing this bill and Senator Thune for co-sponsoring it. 
This bill is an important step in our nation-to-nation -nation relationship. We ask this committee to work and interact, interact this bill, this Congress. Wobila. Thank you to our testifier, Senator Rounds. Do you want to start with the questions? Sorry to catch you thank, off guard. No, there. no. Th thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I most certainly appreciate it. And I, I want to just make two points. For individuals that would like to see a firsthand account of what happened there, I think Black Elk Speaks, which was the story as shared by Black Elk, who was there at the time, and the message afterwards is, is it was a great holy man and a leader, uh, respected, uh, but his message in his book is one that is very, very special, and it shares in some detail what happened on that particular day and that evening. Um, and I, I would simply point out that, that these two leaders have come together, and rather than asking that the land be put into a trust, they have asked to have it be separated out with separate with fee status so that the tribes can make the decisions. I pointed out because, and I would, would like each of them to just make a brief comment on this, but the importance of consultation between Congress and the tribes, which is something which I think has been missing, this is their recommendation. And this is one that I think is important that we honor. And I simply appreciate the, the thought that went into this. Would, would, our, would each of you care to just briefly explain what that, why that is important to you that it be put in this way rather than in a trust? Yes, sir, and it's uh, very important we put this into the restricted fee status uh, because, quite simply, because to me, anyways, um, because uh, granted, what happened there, uh, this was this forty acres is literally the killing fields of eighteen ninety, and we lost our relatives there, and we want to restore the land uh, back to the to the original people, the Lakota people. And, and now being the, the Gwala Sioux tribe and the Cheyenne River Sioux tribe. And um, you want to put it that in the name of the tribes and not the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Uh, I, I would like to uh, mention that, you know, um, I think we're entitled to it. And the, the title should be ours. Um, we should be the owners um, of this land um, because our ancestors... Um, are buried there. So I believe we should have complete ownership of it. Um, and that's why we are here. Um, you know, from, from the speaking from the heart, you know, my, those are my, uh, I'm the seventh generation of C. Tonka, Chief Bigfoot. And his son, Hikro, also perished with him. And that's where my bloodline comes from. So for me, being sitting here today is very important for me and not only for uh, myself but, and my tribe, but for my Teoshpa and my family. Well, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, the reason why I asked that question in particular is because this may very well have been put into a trust status. But after consultation, after the discussion with the tribes at their request, it was changed specifically because they wanted it in their name and not in the government's name. And I think that says a lot, first of all, about their feelings, about how personal this is. But second of all, hopefully it is a changing point in the way that we deal in a government to government relationships, respecting their recommendations. And I thank you both for that explanation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Garriott, uh, this land, well, let me just ask the question this way. How is it going to function? This is a unique um, legislative proposal, which I support um, for all the reasons articulated by our testifiers and by Senator Rounds. But are there any practical implications as far as the department goes? From a practical standpoint, it, you know, really... You know, I think the our involvement really starts, you know, in the beginning in, in terms of making sure that we do a proper survey um, and that we ensure that uh, the land is recorded in the, the two tribes name properly and then making sure that if there are any uh, utility easements or anything like that, that those are, are properly transferred. Um, otherwise, from a practical standpoint, it would 
um, you know, moving forward from a jurisdiction, taxation status, et cetera, um, it would essentially be the same as, as trust land. Thank you very much. Vice Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you um, to each of you. I, I, I do think that it is it's somewhat remarkable that uh, the three witnesses, um, not only from the tribes, but, uh, but you, Mr. Garriott, are all descendants. Um, and to know that you all as descendants have been working to, um, to secure, to maintain this land uh, and the manner in which Senator Rounds has, has pointed out uh, a way of, of consultation um, and, and really listening to, to the desires of, of the tribes themselves. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that because you are at this point with this legislative ask, that the, the lands that have been identified um, uh, to be designated as restricted fee lands, that this is, this is what you are seeking. Um, in other words, are there, are there any additional lands in the area that um, might also be considered uh, to be designated by Congress as, as restricted fee lands? Uh, yes. Um, I do believe, you know, there may be others, but for, uh, for today, we like to uh, focus on this. This is a, a specific uh, issue here. Good. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have um, in terms of questions. I want to thank Senator Rounds for, for bringing this, and um, I want to thank I want to thank you for, for your sharing your family's story um, because it is a story of far, far too many um, that uh, needs to be heard, needs to be respected, and, um, and we must not forget. So mm. thank you. Mr. Chairman, did you want to make any final comments? Thank you. Uh, just lastly, I, I, um, I think you heard it. But, you know, I really want to um, <clears throat> stress the importance that the Lakota people have uh, to the land. There's a connection there uh, to our to our own land, our community. Um, <clears throat> and this connection is um, felt throughout Indian country. Other tribes are uh, in a similar situation. Um, and there's there's no other place like it. And there's there's no other group of people, nation of people that have that connection here on in North America. So it is a unique situation and perhaps that's uh, difficult for others to understand, but this is uh, in biblical terms, uh, these lands are, are, are Eden. This is our paradise on earth right here in, uh, in uh, Lakota Nation uh, and the Black Hills. You know, those, those areas are, are sacred to us. Lands are sacred to us. Uh, so. We have that connection, and um, just wanted to point that out. I think that that that's fitting here with this, uh, with this bill and the importance of it. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. If there are no more questions for, oh, I'm sorry, uh, Mr. President. Uh, yes, uh, just and and thank you for letting me speak. And um, one thing I like to put out there is, you know, this is a collaboration of um, not only the tribes but with the with the with the government. And, you know, uh, I know uh, me and Chairman LeBeau, we took we took this issue all the way to the grassroots uh, of um, both tribes, both Tioshpa's families uh, and, and all the descendants um, and survivors, I should say. So and we and, we, and it took a, a lot of effort and, and a lot of consultation and, and time and energy to to gather all this information so we can get this done right. And from what I'm seeing, you know, I'm, uh, it sounds like, uh, or the way I see it from my view, um, I think we, uh, we're ready to move forward and, and uh, yes, get, <laughs> make, make we're, we're uh, positive it's gonna happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there are no more questions for our witnesses, members may also submit written questions for the record. The hearing record will be open for two weeks. I want to thank all of our witnesses for their time and their testimony. And this hearing is adjourned. Thank you.